our uh, presentation today is about GNSS system, which is uh, abbreviation of Global Navigation Satellite System that refer to constellation of satellites providing signals from space that transmit uh, positioning and time data to GNSS system or receivers. And these systems are quite expensive. And our revolutionary talk today is about a new revolutionary approach, which promises centimeter level accuracy uh, with low cost devices and like smartphones and U blocks. Our talk today is uh, by Professor Hussein Nahdavanshi, and he is professor of uh, geodesy and geophysics in my department. Uh, civil and environmental engineering at NTNU. So the floor is yours, uh, Professor Hussain, and we are very interested to hear about this revolutionary approach that save costs and enable this technology on wide scale. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Professor Hamdi. And you see uh, the title and the Professor Hamdi presented you the title also. I ask my PhD student Ardashir will be here, but I see that I see him that he is uh, on the panel. He's not here. I ask him to be here um, uh, uh, to be here physically in case that yeah, but he is in the panel that if, if uh, I need him that he will help us also. Uh, as you see that we are a team of three, but we have uh, several partners also. Uh, that help us with the um, instruments if we need, for example, from road administration and the Department of Computer Science. But anyway, um, GNSS, uh, Professor Hamdi mentioned the GNSS. Uh, it is the Global Navigation Satellite System, and uh, we have different GNSS now. We have the, 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 the one of the best, we can say that it is the American GPS, uh, GNSS that we call it GPS. We have, the, we have the Russian GNSS, we call it GLONASS. We have the European GNSS, uh, we call it Galileo. And now we have a Chinese GNSS that we call it Beidou. Um, do you see this one? Uh, I show you, Professor Hamdi, do you see this uh, instrument I am showing here? Uh, yes, we see it, but it's okay. uh, not very clear. If you read yeah. it off a little bit, maybe. Yeah. Uh, this yes, is a geodetic is. GNSS receiver. Uh, this is that the receiver that we receive the GNSS signal and we use it in the geomatics. It is a very advanced GNSS receiver. And uh, this is the antenna, uh, the material and the technology, the software technology here is very advanced. And this is the um, uh, molar book, we call it, or the, it is the interface that we give the uh, comments and we see the information that we need. This is a G geodetic GNSS receiver. Before I start my presentation, it, the, we have some two sums that I have to explain it for you, uh, some basic definition. <clears throat> real time versus post processing. With this GNSS receiver, we can achieve very high accuracy centimeter level in real time. It means that um, you can put it in any place and you in real time based on the methodology that we use. The method is called RTK. It is based on receiving correction from base stations in Norway, for example. Uh, it has a SIM card inside this. We have a communication link. Then we can uh, achieve the uh, high accuracy, um, centimeter level accuracy for the positioning, finding the position of the points. Uh, and also the versus the post-processing. This is the method that we are interested in geomatics and geodesy. Uh, post-processing, it means that we collect data with this and we come to the office and we have a better possibility there, but the results are not available in real time, but we can achieve the under centimeter accuracy. We come to millimeter level accuracy. In some applications, we need millimeter level <coughs> accuracy. Um, the other two sum is the um, code observation versus phase observation. With this receiver, we have two level of accuracy. 
If we want a high level of accuracy, we have to use the phase observation. This is a method. Uh, this RTK that I mentioned for you, it uses the phase observation. And the other one is code observation. Well, uh, if we want a, a lower level of accuracy, um, why we have two level? Because the phase observation is very complicated and you have to take a price. It means that you have to solve a lot of parameters before you get the good positions. But with the code observation, you receive very quickly without any problem or ambiguity, you will receive your uh, good results. Uh, the other two sums that we have, it is a static versus kinematic positioning. We can put uh, this receiver on a point, a stationary, and we can have a position of that point. We are not moving, we call it a static positioning, or you can put it on a, on a vehicle, for example, on a car, airplane, boat, then we are moving. It means that we, we are doing the kinematic positioning. It is the, um, the, the object is moving and you have a moving positions that you uh, position your points that is moving like, like car. Um, and uh, you can use this receiver to achieve high accuracy uh, for a moving object also. Um, uh, and then we can mix this thing also. We can calculate. Uh, an object, it is moving kinematic uh, and um, uh, with phase observation and in real time, or we can have an object, it is moving, and we can have the results in post-process with phase observation again. You can combine these two sums that I explained for you. No, I go to my first slide. Uh, the, the thing or the issue here that this instrument costs, this costs 300,000 kron, and it is very expensive. And uh, for the practical use, it is just limited people are interested to buying this for 300,000 kron and limited number of people or agencies, companies. And uh, that is the big problem with this, uh, this uh, instrument. It's not a problem, but the issue that you, you have to pay for that. Uh, our idea, it was here, as you see that, we bring the accuracy accessible even with the low-cost receiver. And we are talking about the smartphones here at the, yeah, um, a smartphone, everybody has a smartphone to bring the high possible accuracy. And it was the, the idea of this project. Is it possible to do that? Can we bring uh, to have a uh, high, high accuracy uh, with smartphones? Uh, and now we have developed a method uh, that promises the even even centimeter level accuracy with low cost smartphones also. Uh, that method we call it NTNU method. Uh, to do that, we have created test area. I show you the test area here. Probably you know that one. This building is the building of the zero emission building, and this is the Nina building. It is behind our department here, the parking place. And we have resembles uh, an area uh, with a big buildings. It, 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 it blocks the GNSS signals. We have a many different type of the GNSS uh, signal reception in this area. And we have created um, this test area to test our idea. We have done many, many tests and uh, we have been uh, successful to uh, to have a solution, uh, but our solution, it is at, it is an early stage. So far, we are in a stationary mood. It means that we are not moving and we are doing post-process. It means that we are not doing real time, but all program package that we have prepared, it is prepared for the real time and it is prepared for the kinematic mode and it's moving mode also, but uh, we don't have enough resources to test all of them. Uh, and uh, we have to do it a step by step. The thing that we did, we have used these two smartphones I show you. It is one of them is the Pixel 5 from Google. Um, and the other one is a Samsung Galaxy S20 that we have used them. And uh, we have collected data with this. And even we have collected data with the GNSS, uh, geodetic GNSS, the expensive one also in our test area. And I will show you some of the results here. Um, 
Uh, you see here the results of uh, Google Pixel 5 a smartphone. To the left, uh, you see that uh, we have done the conventional method that we use in geomatics. This we call, uh, the method I mentioned to you, it's RTK method. In Norway, we call it RTK. It is the uh, method that, that in real time, you can get the uh, best uh, possible accuracy in real time, also in the centimeter level. Uh, to the left, uh, we have used the um, conventional RTK method, and to the right, we, it is the method that we have developed, the algorithm that we have developed. Before telling you the results also, this is the antenna that we have in the G geodetic receiver. Uh, antenna in the mobile phone, it is a very, very cheap antenna. My students knows that how much does it cost, this antenna in mobile phone? Yeah, he says that $1. It means uh, think about that this is several tens of thousand crowns just for this antenna. But the antenna they use it in the receive uh, the in the G uh, in the mobile and the smartphone. It is one of the cheapest available antenna in the market. And uh, the chip and the software for this uh, technology for uh, software for the processing also it is the cheap one. And uh, for that. Uh, with this geodetic receiver, we don't have any problem. You can say that everything is uh, straightforward and you get the signal. The signal, uh, it uh, limits and it uh, um, deletes the bad signals. With this one, we have an enormous amount of the problem and we have to solve all these problems. You don't get the signal, signal get lost, signal has a jam, signal has a problem, and there are many different problems that you have with the smartphone. Then we have to take care of all these problems and the software package that we have developed, it take care of all it takes care of all these problems. <clears throat> and you see here the red is a bad one. It is the uh, the solution that is not good because we have tested that in the post-process mode and in the um, uh, post-process mode and in the static mode, we have a full control. We know the, res we know the answer, uh, the faucet is given, we know that, then we can test our, uh, our, um, uh, our technique. Here you see that you see a lot of red dots, uh, the, um, uh, this axis and this axis, it is the position. Uh, this is north position, east position. You can say that like X and Y, um, uh, like latitude and longitude, something like that. And uh, there are the position and uh, you see that you have uh, just one dot. It is green here and this is the NTNU method. It is the same data. Everything is the same, but this is two different method. And you see that here we have a lot of fixes uh here that and we have the correctly fixed data and the, what is the fixed solution it is the best solution we have put a criteria uh, that uh, that if you come to this level of accuracy is acceptable from us and uh, the two <coughs> the two graphs under these two they are the height uh, these are x and y and this is the up or height value and you see here, you have a lot of um, uh, red dots here, but here you have a almost uh, um, green dot here that you have a lot of correctly fixed solution and the solution that we are interested in. And I am running of time and I will show you the, my last slide. It is, we have done the same with the geodetic receiver also, with this one, which is, uh, uh, which is the most expensive one. And you see that <laughs> we have <coughs> examined our our method, and new method with the data collected with this good receiver. Here you see again, you have a lot of green dot with our method that we have developed. We have a lot of correctly fixed solutions. And here to the left, we have a Mm, yeah, not not the same as mobile phone. We do not expect this is 300,000 Chrome receiver. What you see is still you have some <coughs> wrongly fixed uh, uh, solution here that is being solved with our method. Uh, uh, yeah, but this is in principle. I have uh, do not have much more time here and um, I can't go so much in details on that what we have done. Uh, we are in the process, in the last stage of the process, we have been in contact with TTO. 
to make a patent for our uh, method and to make it commercialized. Uh, you know that my student, uh, Ardashir, would like to call this method revolutionary method. Uh, and um, and you, you see that it, it is even, we have a very small group here, but uh, the impact is huge, is enormous. You know that we have a billion, billions of the smartphones available in the market outside, and uh, many people are interested. Uh, think about the car, uh, car companies they have a navigation package in the uh, navigation package in their car they can't put this one uh, in their car nobody buys that but they can put something like that if we could give them uh, some good level of accuracy also we are thinking in the future the driver less car and the road administration in norway is also working with that and it is about the uh, uh, yeah, ITS, intelligence transport system. This is will be has will have a huge impact on these applications. Then I close my presentation. Thank you very much, guys. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Professor Hossein, uh, for uh, interesting and to, to to make this comparison between conventional approach and uh, and you mentioned actually all different approaches. And uh, in this slide, we see the conventional approach and the NTNU method, which uh, we think it's a very uh, innovative. And uh, actually now okay. uh, it's the floor also for our audience. Maybe we have some questions.